It's time to present a theory as to how the world is structured as an alternative to problem-plagued materialism. For those who may be new to this series, I should point out that we have highlighted a number of problems with materialism in preceding videos that are linked below in the description. After describing idealism, we will come back to this list and describe how all of the issues disappear with this newfound understanding. Open your mind and let's go. Idealism posits that the fundamental ontological primitive of all existence is consciousness. Please note that consciousness is non-physical and is represented here only for illustrative purposes. We are minds, a part of the activity of consciousness. We are our own set of ever-changing thoughts, feelings, and sensory perceptions. The only constant of existence is consciousness, the subject or witness as the activity of consciousness, including our minds, are objects of awareness. Everything that we perceive as physical is in reality mental. While this concept may sound surprising at first, it shouldn't. For while dreaming we accept the perceived physicality surrounding us in our dreams, even though all of it is produced by our own thoughts. So you see, the fundamental idealist concept of the physical as derived from the mental is not even theoretical as it is a known fact of existence that we create perceived physical worlds with our mind every time that we dream, and we have first-hand knowledge of this fact. Let that sink in. We exist not as separate entities, but rather as egoic minds that are temporarily dissociated, just as waves in the ocean are identifiable individually, yet are nothing but ocean. We are fundamentally one. This process of dissociation is akin to dissociative identity disorder, which also is a known fact of existence. From the Cleveland Clinic's website, we read, People with dissociative identity disorder have two or more separate personalities. These identities control a person's behavior at different times. Normally dissociation from consciousness occurs with one body to one mind. Yet it is a well-established fact that a single body may exist as multiple minds. So dissociation itself is a known fact of existence, though the mechanism is unknown. From within our egoic mind, the boundary to consciousness is what we perceive as the physical world of our everyday lives. Our physical existence is a dashboard of sensory perception that has evolved over much time that enables us to make sense of existence in our own limited way. We are like pilots born inside an airplane cockpit that lacks visibility outside, as the dashboard that our senses show also is not directly representative of the reality outside, but functions well for our survival. Other species have differently evolved sense perceptions, and therefore different dashboards. Dissociation is of course not limited to humans. All metabolizing organisms are temporarily dissociated from consciousness. Another word for dissociated alters is life. All inanimate objects, as viewed from our limited perspective, are non-dissociated conscious thoughts. All of the physical world is what consciousness appears to us as across our dissociative boundary. The physical world is absolutely real and out there, just not ontologically fundamental. Now let's relate this concept to known scientific behavior. Our boundary to consciousness is where, just as in the double slit experiment, a collapse of the quantum wave function occurs based on our observing presence. Matter instantiates there in the dashboard. When the observer is again ambiguous, matter reverts to what we label as a wave, as demonstrated in the quantum eraser experiments. Beyond our dashboard, matter is really the thoughts of universal consciousness including other alters. As noted in a previous video, science and metaphysics are separate fields, and physics, chemistry, biology, and all of the other sciences remain equally valid under idealism as they study the behavior of matter, not what it is. Physical laws are constant, as that is the nature of consciousness. This constancy likely means that universal consciousness does not possess self-reflective meta-consciousness knowledge of its own awareness, as we acquired through evolution, but rather it is only phenomenally conscious. It experiences. Time and space exist only as useful constructs within our minds, as universal consciousness has neither, 
only an ever-present now. As an analogy, consider that the complete story contained within a book is entirely present in the now of universal consciousness. But within our quite limited, individuated minds, we need to read a book line by line over time in order to understand it. Time is simply a useful fiction to our very limited minds. Next, recall that the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2022 was for research involving entangled particles interacting instantaneously across great distances regardless of the speed of light. These experiments also showed that materialist spacetime is not real. Interaction between distant entangled particles is not problematic in an idealist paradigm where spacetime doesn't exist in universal consciousness. Now, because idealism claims that everything exists through consciousness, a frequent mischaracterization is that idealism is solipsistic, meaning that all of existence is within a single, individuated mind. Let's clear that up, as idealism actually argues for a single reality that we all share, so it is not solipsistic at all, quite the opposite. Another known fact of the world is that our thoughts and emotions can impact one another. A negative thought can put us in a bad mood for the rest of the day, and anger can displace our thoughts. This is important because another misconception about idealism is a statement like, why then can alcohol change our thoughts, implying that the physical impacts the mental. But this is a dualist argument that assumes belief in both as primitives. Idealism claims that the alcohol is also ontologically mental, like everything else. So when everything is mental, alcohol can, in fact, change our thoughts. To see how powerful this concept of idealism is, let's return to our problems of materialism list, see how it fares, and add additional information through example. In our first video, Knowledge Refutes Materialism, linked above and in the description below, we learned that obtaining complex knowledge is impossible using only determinism and or randomness. But understanding knowledge in terms of a conscious knower with some freedom of action is trivial with idealism, and knowledge is again possible. The next problems were discussed in the video The Hard Problem of Consciousness, also linked, where problem number two was that a non-causal mind could not have any beneficial properties where evolution requires them, and therefore couldn't have evolved. Well, if consciousness is primary, this problem also vanishes. For number three, consciousness is obviously not an illusion, as it is fundamental. Next, experiences are all we ever have, and yes, they can influence each other when consciousness is primary, so this objection is also gone. The next set of problems came from the video The Scientific Method versus Materialism where number five vanishes as consciousness does not need proof of itself. Problems number six and seven, dealing with the need for an observer, are simply satisfied under idealism, and these are only problematic for a materialist. The next video, Materialism is Irrational, covered the final, less trivial problems listed, where the first is about acquired savant syndrome and gaining skills through brain injury. This apparent contradiction resolves with the realization that all is mental, and any mental event that results in the lessening of the separation of our limited separate selves with universal consciousness allows for the possibility of direct access to unlearned knowledge. This would explain how people could gain skills after injuries. Materialism has no hope of answering that. The next problem about the lack of brain activity for a blind alter is solved by recognizing that the human brain, as viewed across our dissociative boundary, is a representation of the mind, and not the opposite, as in materialism, where brain magically creates mind. With the arrow of causation going from mind to brain, it makes perfect sense that a blind alter of a dissociated patient would have the brain scans of an unsighted person, as the brain is derivative from mind. It also explains why the neural correlates of consciousness exist, but with the arrow of causation in the proper direction. And placebo's work, because our awareness is the same conscious awareness that is the source of our perceived physical body. 
Finally, the granddaddy of objections to materialism is why does consciousness exist at all? Because it is all that exists. That simple. So you see, idealism is a more rational and parsimonious explanation for the nature of reality that is supported by reason and known facts of existence, especially that we create perceived physical worlds with our mind every time that we dream, every single day. Another known fact to add to this list is that for millennia, people have accessed their unchanging conscious nature through meditation which is a state of true peace and happiness. Our minds are constantly distracted by fleeting sensations, thoughts, and feelings. So actively ignoring that chatter reveals our most fundamental unified nature, which is unchanging consciousness. Waves appear in the ocean, but they are still just ocean. To summarize, a fantastic definition of consciousness by Rupert Spira is Consciousness is that in which all experience appears, with which all experience is known, and out of which all experience is made. The current Western assumption of materialism clearly has problems, as listed here, but it also denies experience itself, which is a denial of everything that we know. In the words of Nikola Tesla, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. We agree. We hope that this overview of idealism has not caused what you perceive as your brain to melt. Please help with the YouTube algorithm with a like and by subscribing to Consciousness Squared. Many thanks to the brilliant minds of Bernardo Castrop and Rupert Spira.